On this little session, we're going to look at how um, we can can look at internal reactions in uh, with respect to a free body diagram. And there's a couple different ways in which you can envision uh, in a more uh, overall view of, of how you're going to go about doing your free body diagrams, analyzing your uh, structure. So what I've got here is uh, somewhat of a complicated beam s system here. And um, so I've got F1 and F2 over here on the right and um, uh, at location C. And I've got this thousand pounds here, so it's not a three-fourths member whatsoever. And the first thing people will probably go to is, as well, um, I need to find out what the internal reactions are at the joint. So they're really joint-specific uh, free body diagrams. So when we do that, uh, all we have to do is what? Well, I just take this, oops, little faux pas there, take this and put it away, and then I can put on, oh, call it BX and BY. And I'm going to have in reactions here of, oops, you know, I'm just having my troubles here. And I need to go backwards, so we'll just go backwards. There we go. That's BX and BY. And then what else do we do? Well, we just take that off over here. We're going to have a V at A. We're going to have a moment at A. And we're going to have an axial load, uh, A sub X. So those are my free body diagrams. And not only that, what I like to do here for the W the distributed load is come right in here and make a dashed line which indicates it is a uh, equivalent load and it's the area so in this case it's W over L and then you're going to need where this is located which is at L over 2. Now for instance if we're given F1 and F2 and W it's not a problem so if you have F1 and F2 you can sum forces in the x and y direction and come up with bx and by. Once you have bx and by and you know w and l, then you can find out v sub a by simply summing forces upward, a sub x by summing forces horizontally, and summing moments right around point a here in order to find the moment at a. So we'll be doing quite a bit of that as, as time goes on. Well, that's not the only way we could do it, because another thing that we could do is say, well, really, I can keep the thing as the overall free body diagram. And then what do I have? Then what I'm working with is, again, is my shear force at A, my moment at A, and my axial load as we had before. And then this would be still be WL. And I'd have this distance here as L over 2. And of course, I'd need my other distances here in order to figure out. And you see, I can do it. If I know F1 and F2, and if I know W and the Ls, and I know all these distances, well, then I just sum forces vertically, horizontally, and some moments right around point A here. And I have my uh, analysis done to find out what the forces are there at the wall. Forces and moments are at the, at the wall. So the last one is, I'm really interested in what's happening internally in the beam. So these are <clears throat> based on what's happening in the beam, inside of the beam, as opposed to where they're hooked together. And this is going to be really important to us and very, very
commonly we're going to have to draw the free body diagrams in order to find the uh, shear force, axial load in a moment at a particular location. So I've picked that I'm going to cut this open right here at, if you will, at L over 2. So what, do I'm, what am I going to have? Well, here's my beam down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my loading and put it down on, on there. And I've taken off uh, my the wall also. So what am I going to have here now? My equivalent force is WL over 2 because this is L over 2. And this distance is L over 4. And again, I have from my previous work on the previous two slides, I've got M sub A. B sub A and my A sub uh, X. So what do I have here? Well, I got my moment here. I'll just call M. My V here. And I'm just going to call it P here. So knowing this from my previous work, AX, AY, or VA and MA, I can find out by summing moments right around here what that moment is. And we're going to use that moment to figure out what the stresses are due to bending. We can calculate, obviously, the, the load P. Easy, straightforward. And we're going to divide that by the cross-sectional area. And we're going to have the stress that's internally being created by that load P. And then we're going to have this shear force. And that causes a different kind of a stress because it's parallel to this plane that we have just drawn. So those are a couple different ways to view what a free body diagram can look like. See you next time.